Hello everyone. One day, two cows were out in a field eating grass. One cow said to the other cow, Ooh. Hey, the other cow replied, I was just about to say the same thing. Friends, if any of you think that I am going to talk about the same thing that I had the previous two weeks, you are right. Because since Easter, we have been reading and reflecting on the appearances of the risen Christ to his disciples. On Easter day, we read John's account of Mary Magdalene encountering the resurrected Christ at the tomb. Last Sunday, we read John's version of the two appearances of Christ to his disciples at two different times. Today's Gospel is the continuation of the story, which recounts the appearance of Jesus to two of his disciples on their way home to Emmaus. Even though you are probably quite familiar with the story, allow me to briefly summarize it so that we can understand today's text well. On the day Jesus rose from the dead, two of his disciples were walking to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Perhaps they were going back home totally discouraged and dejected, lost in grief and despair. As they were traveling, a man joined them. The man asked them what they were talking about as they walked. They were surprised that the man had not heard about the recent events surrounding Jesus, the trial, suffering, crucifixion, death and the empty tomb and so on. So they proceeded to tell the man everything. The man walked with them and animated the conversation by quoting the scriptures regarding Christ. When they arrived in Emmaus that evening, the disciples invited him to eat with them. He did, and as he broke the bread and blessed the meal, they recognized him to be the resurrected Jesus. They realized that Jesus was not only alive, but right there with them. Jesus then vanished from their sight. The two disciples then returned at once to Jerusalem and told the others about their encounter with Jesus. I believe that it occurred on the same evening of Easter Sunday when the disciples were huddled together in a locked room in fear of the Jews, as we heard in last week's reading. When the two disciples were on their way home from Jerusalem, they were terribly disappointed and depressed about Jesus' death. But now they had strong grounds for their belief. The tomb was empty, angels had appeared and announced that Jesus has been raised from the dead. The man explained to them the references made in scriptures about Christ's death and resurrection. Moreover, they had a personal encounter with the risen Lord. So, having convinced of Jesus' resurrection, they said to the others, It is true, the Lord has risen. While they were telling their story, once again Jesus suddenly appeared in their midst. But the disciples, in spite of the testimony from the women and the two disciples, reacted with the fear and skepticism. They still could not believe their eyes when Jesus appeared before them. They could not rightly comprehend what was happening. They were powerless. They thought they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus did some amazing things to make them believe that he was indeed alive and real. First, Jesus calmed the disciples by offering them peace. The greeting of peace was a sign of his love and forgiveness for them. Second, he showed them the wounds in his hands and feet and he invited them to touch them and feel him. Third, he ate fish with them. Fourth, 
He reminded them of his own teachings and explained to them the need for his suffering, death and resurrection. Fifth, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and what they say, and particularly how the law, the prophets, and the Psalms had foretold about all the events that would take place. Lastly, he reminded them that they were not to be mere believers, but also be the preachers of his gospel, because they were witnesses of all these things. Friends, today we are blessed to know and believe in what the disciples had seen and heard. However, like the disciples, we may not understand just about anything and everything happening around us. But in times of trouble and sorrow, despair and gloom, Jesus makes his presence known to us and offers a peace that transcends human understanding. He also reaches out to us today in ways that we too can recognize him, touch him, feel his presence and experience him. Besides, he wants to become everything to us and be part of our daily life. And if we respond to his call and enter into a personal relationship with him, he opens our minds to understand the scriptures. Friends, I regard the Holy Mass as the most opportune time for us to experience Jesus Christ intimately and for our souls to be filled with peace as the disciples were, even though we may not be able to see him physically and hear him speak directly. It is completely possible to have a personal relationship with the Lord even though we have never seen or touched him. All we have to do is to believe in God's gift of peace offered through the Holy Eucharist and accept it joyfully and gratefully. If we receive the body and blood and the gospel of Jesus Christ with reverence, faith and love, we will certainly experience all the blessings promised to us. At the same time, like the apostles, we are not only called to be believers but also witnesses and preachers of the word. We are not to keep our faith to ourselves, but rather to share it with others, so that, as St. Saint John says in today's second reading, others may not sin, and even if they sin, they may know that Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, has personally paid the price for their sins. However, we are not to share only our own experience of the Lord, but courageously and sincerely share the truths about the Word of God. Amen. God bless you.